Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock here in the morning, um, January the 11th, Wednesday, January the 11th. I'm glad to be here. This is one shot of you, survivor to another. We're on for 30 minutes. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. Missed my show yesterday, slept in. Sorry about that. Um, oh, hopefully, you weren't here waiting for me. Um, I appreciate everybody who's tuning into my shows. And um, you know, I have almost, almost done 900 shows now, and I have a lot of people tuning into my shows. I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. I hope that somewhere down the road uh, that my shows are helping somebody. Um, you know, there's just so many people out here who have been abused and who have, and sadly enough, uh, who who are suffering, you know what I mean? And I just really want to be one more voice speaking about, out about this stuff and talking publicly about this stuff and and you know, showing people just one example of one person's healing journey of what I've had to go through and what I'm, what's helped me. And not, you know, we're all different. We all need different things, and we all are going to handle things differently. And um, you know, so what may work for me may not work for you. What works for you may not work for me. That's the whole issue. We have to find what works for us, and um, you know, get the help that we need. Right? Whatever you know, whatever it is, whether it's counselor, or therapist, or, or, or group group support, whatever. But just make sure you know that you get some help if you're struggling and you're, and you're not able to cope and and having a hard time. You know, like I'm uh, five year five years into my healing journey almost, and um, in a couple of months here it'll be five years, and uh, that's a long journey. But you know, it's been good because I've been able to make make uh, huge progress. You know, in, in the way that I feel and the way that you know that my daily life is really it's, it's just so much better now. You know than it was when I'm on the other side of the fence, but. But I know what it's like to be on that other side, you know, just just feeling that there's no hope and that there's just it's just a, a horrible situation, you know. I, I know what it's like to be there, and um, so that's why I want to do these shows, you know, to, just to let people know that there are there is help out there. You have to reach out for it. You have to look for it, and it is. But like, most people aren't going to reach in to help you because most people don't even know that we've got issues going on or that we're that we've been abused or that we you know, so many times people will not tell somebody, they won't tell anybody that they've been abused or something happened to them in the past that was just so bad that they're having a hard time now. And so, you know, many times people don't realize and, and even if they did, they may not know what to say. They may not know how to approach you about it. And so they you know, many times survivors of abuse will just suffer on on their own, you know, that's what I was doing, that's what so many people do and so I just hope that people will just remember that it is ultimately our responsibility to reach out uh, because most people aren't going to reach back to us, you know what I mean, unless unless you reach out first and tell them, hey, look, I need help, you know. And there there is some good help out there. Whatever way you decide to look for it, whatever, you know, whatever route you decide to go, there is good help. And I would just say keep looking for that hope where you can find it, you know. You have to listen to my shows at, all, at your own discretion. You know, I'm talking about abuse and Abuse is a sensitive subject. You know, most people aren't comfortable listening to this type of stuff. I had to live with this my whole life, so of course I'm okay talking about it. But most people would be, you know, might make you feel uncomfortable, right? Unless unless you're used to dealing with it or used to hearing about it. So you have to listen at your own discretion to all of my shows. And if you're an, an, uh, 18 and under, 18, uh, you're 18 years old or under, have an adult listener show with you, somebody who's older, who's who can help you make a decision whether or not you should be listening, right, age appropriately. Because my shows are not for younger children, and none of my shows. And there, there's a lot of adult mature material on them. So you need to protect yourself at all times. So if you're 18... Uh, and under, make sure you have somebody who's older, who's an adult, who can help you, you know, just have them listen to the show with you. They can help you decide, or a couple of shows, and they can help you decide whether or not, you know, it's age appropriate for you, right? So we'll get right into this. Well, I, I was uh, meant to do my show yesterday that slept in. So sorry about that. Uh, I want to pick up kind of where we left off, looking at a, a BCM course. I got it off of Emmanuel's church uh, website from um, www.emmanuel's, I-M-M-A-N-U, ELS Emanuels dot org, and um, on that website there's a uh, there's a, there's a biblical counseling course, and for people who who are not only may be interested in becoming a biblical counselor, but also you know, those who are seeking biblical counseling, and so there's some great information there. Um, there's a BCM course that you can download, a little tiny little uh, download button there that you can download this um, zip file full of uh, PDFs, right? And so I got the PDFs from that download. It's from the BCF, Biblical Counseling Foundation. And um, 
that's from emmanuels.org. And I've also been looking at uh, doing some real extensive work in the, in the faith therapy from freechristiancounselingtraining.com. Uh, free Christian Counseling Training, all one word, <laughs> www.freechristiancounselingtraining.com, I believe it's .com. But anyway, that's, there's some great information there, faith therapy, and the, uh, Dr. Reiner really taking a look at um, all the situations in a person's life, you know, why people seek counseling in the first place. This is, for, this is mainly training for people who want to become biblical or Christian counselors, right? And so, but in it, you know, because I've survived all this abuse and this horror, uh, because I'm a Christian, I'm actually learning a lot about, you know, uh, sort of how, how, how to move past my stuff, you know what I mean? Because I'm at the last portion of my healing journey, right, really. And I'm doing quite well. I just, there's a few things that I need to work on, mainly issues of my own heart. And uh, for me to be able to move past what happened to me as a child, you know, I've already accepted what happened to me as a child. I've, I've looked at it. I've dealt with it, um, you know, as best that I could. And, and as far as the areas that I, that I that I recognized that I needed to deal with. Right? But uh, there's still some issues where, you know, I mean, I really want to be able to feel... Um, you know, the whole reason why I'm doing this is it's changed my life, right? That's why I started this five years ago. It's because I, I really needed to change my life because it was heading to, it was just heading on a path of all the time. You know, it was like it was either I was going to destroy myself or, or I was just not going to um, to heal. You know what I mean? It was just going to be this miserable, uh, self-destructive type stuff, you know, and, and just, just not being happy, not being content, not being at peace, and not being able to enjoy this life. And that's a horrible way to live. And so I decided five years ago that I was going to go ahead and do this thing. I was going to, I was going to heal, and, and so I'm on the last part part of that, and that is the final change of, of okay, you know, I um I want to feel differently about some of this last stuff that I'm dealing with. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to be able to be the better person in this whole thing. I, I want to be the complete opposite of my abusers, and I want to um, undo. You know the 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 behavioral and the, the all that stuff, the behavioral um, things that I learned as a child. I want to change that. You know what I mean? So that, so that I'm not carrying on this abusive stuff that it was that it was brought up in. You know what I mean? So in other words, I want to break that cycle completely in our, in my own life. I don't have children, but just that whole uh, abusive kind of uh, cycle that I was. So I've had to work uh, pretty hard to change this stuff that I that I recognized and some people pointed out to me that it was doing because of the abuse that I suffered and just the way that I grew up. And that some of these things that I took on were were protective measures, obviously defense mechanisms and and I'm trying to work through those, you know, and, and trying to allow myself to to change, right? So this is the issue. But I'm a Christian, so um all of my stuff is based on Christian um uh, you know, ethics really is it changed my heart because I want to have a heart full of love. I want to have a heart full of goodness and kindness and mercy, and, and a heart that's true, that's full of truth and justice, and a heart that is after God's own heart. You know, and everything that is good. And I want to wipe out evil in my life, and I want to wipe out evil around me. Obviously, you know what I mean. I want to cast out that darkness. I want to, I want to have light and truth and goodness and. I don't want to be like my abusers, and I don't want to live like I did as a child, you know, in, the, in this darkness and this hellhole of an existence. And um, so for me, that's where it's all at. You know, I'm, I'm, you may, people listening to this show may not be a Christian, but that's we're talking about the same things. Talking about love and, and being good to people and being kind to your family and not hurting your children and, and not hurting people around us and not hurting myself. That's what we're talking about here. <laughs> this is what this whole thing is all about. And so it's like, it, whether you're Christian or not, people can pretty well agree, you know what I mean, that there's issues that, you know, children should never, ever have to deal with, that they're being forced to deal with. And, of course, it causes all kinds of problems later on in life, you know, whether it's just uh, self-hatred, self-loathing. Maybe they just hate life. Maybe they love themselves but hate everybody else. Um, maybe, you know what I mean, for, for who knows? I mean, any number of things. Right, and so these issues are issues of the heart, as far as I'm concerned. And every time I look in the Bible, it, it confirms it for me, because it is an issue of the heart. Like I don't know how anybody could could uh, do what they do to children and their 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 family, husbands, wives, whatever, girlfriends, boyfriends. I, I don't care who it is. 
you know, I, I just don't see how people can... It's bad enough that people could do this to a stranger, because <laughs> they don't care about that stranger. But, you know, to do these things to their family, people always say, well, people always hurt those that they love and hurt those that are the closest to them. Well, I don't care if that's some sort of an excuse. You know, to me, that's just no excuse at all. Like, you know, to me, that's just bullshit. That is such garbage. It's like we're responsible for our behavior, and we should all be held accountable for our behavior. Every single person on this planet who does these horrible things should be held accountable, and of course, many of them are not, right? Many people abuse their families and get away with it. Many people abuse and hurt other people and get away with it. And then they walk away smelling like roses, and everybody thinks, oh, look at them, you know, but they but they don't know what they just did to that other person or, or to their family, you know what I mean? There's all kinds of abusers out there. Every one of us has the potential to do that because we have evil in our hearts, right? So we have the potential to either be good you know, or the potential to either be bad, right? I mean, this is a whole, whole, you know, psychology, right? I mean, it's a whole, it's a whole view of of looking at, you know, of what what is man's intent, you know, what is men and women's and, and children's intent of the heart, you know? So, it all comes from the heart, you know. It comes from our, from our, from our will, from our intent to do, you know. And I can't believe, you know. I mean, looking back at my life, I could totally, I mean, I could, that's what I've been talking about here for two years, is what my parents and my siblings and how we all reacted to and what my parents did to us and how we reacted to it. And waking up in the morning just knowing that, oh, God, this is just one more day in hell, and it's just going to, you know, it's just going to, it's never going to end, you know what I mean? And it just doesn't end. And, I mean, I, my sister and I used to talk about that, you know, that day after day we had to li- we had to live like this, you know what I mean? And we had to try to survive it. We had to try to get through it. And we knew that that was not right, you know, because we would talk about stuff. We'd be like, it's just another day in hell. You know what I mean? This is just our life. This is what we live. And so many people will will live like that and will do these things to their families and their children and their loved ones, right? These people who are the closest to them, obviously. That's true. But the thing is, does it, does it, is it okay? Is it ever going to be okay? No. It's not ever going to be okay. This is this is this has got to stop. You know what I mean? That's why I fight against child abuse. But the issue is, is it's an issue of the heart. That's what it is. People don't want to take responsibility for their behaviors. You know, I mean, I've gone on and on and on and talked about the issues between my parents and you know the fact that they hated each other and they would not get help. You know what I mean? This is really what it comes down to. They hated they hated this existence that they had. They did, they hated their lives, right? They hated they hated each other because they were codependent. They were both looking for each other to to meet their needs, and and because it didn't happen, then they they grew hatred for each other. And because they were you know like well you were supposed to save me, well you were supposed to you were supposed to do this, and you were supposed to do that, blaming each other, steady for everything. When each one of them were responsible for their own part in it, and so that's where the responsibility part comes in. It's like we're all responsible for our part. And it's an issue of the heart. How am I going to respond to this situation? You know, and as a child with an immature mind, obviously I was going to respond in a number of ways. I was either going to become a wimp and cry in the corner after being beaten and tortured and raped, uh, and lay there and die. You know what I mean? Or I was going to come out fighting. You know what I mean? And that's that's pretty well the way I came out. Came out of the corner fighting. You know what I mean? To say f you to the world, f you to my parents, and f you to everybody else. And then behavior was not very conducive for work environment. By the time I was 16 and I started working, I had to change that to um, to uh, party girl situation. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh well, it's okay. I'll just uh, I'll just I'll just instead of being uh, uh, abusive to other people, I'll just party, 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 party. And if I kill myself, oh well. And you know, this is my response to the way I was brought up. That's horrific. That's horrible. So many people are doing it right now. <laughs> and you know, and then of course, I mean, I looked pretty good from the outside all the way through until my healing. I mean, people would not have known that I was having a problem. You know what I mean? Nobody would have known that I was coming home wanting to kill myself or planning my suicide. I mean, I was going to work, holding it together really quite well. But then at the end of the day, I was uh, I was sitting around thinking, oh my God, I'm stuck with myself. I'm stuck in this hellhole, and I'm um, living a, do- a double life. People don't realize the amount of damage and that's going on that that, that that happened to me. And people don't realize what's going on in my heart that I want to die and you know this is a horrible place but so many people are there and I know that and the issue is it's all an issue of the heart you know I wanted so badly for my parents to love me and I knew that was never going to happen 
You know, so five years ago when I was sitting around, I thought, man, why am I doing this? Why am I self-sabotaging? Why am I wanting to to um, to to escape this when this wasn't even my fault? You know what I mean? Like this was this was definitely not my fault. And 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 people chose to do this to me. Now how am I going to deal with it? How am I going to change this? And so change, the word change came into my mind, and I thought, oh yeah. I need to change the way that I feel. I need to find some love. I need to find some goodness. I need to find something within me that says, you know what, it's okay. This life is a, this life is, is the way that I'm going to choose to make it, which is good. You know, I need to change the way that I feel. And I need to change the way, because obviously I can't change my past, right? <laughs> so it's pretty obvious. So to me, it's an issue of the heart. And and, and when, when I look at the Bible, it just affirms every single thing that, that, that I'm thinking, because it is truly an issue of the heart. Why do people rape their children? Because they're sick and twisted and evil. <laughs> why? That's exactly why. There is no other word for it. You know what I mean? How, you cannot sit there and and say that that oh they were predisposed to it. Or you know I don't care if they were predisposed to it. Everyone is responsible for their actions. You know I don't care if they were abused as children. They figure well, well this is what I'll do to my own children or somebody else's child. There's no excuse for that. And people have to stop excusing that away. And the issue is, is it's, it's their choice, you know. It's their choice to do these horrible things. Why do people stab and kill their children? Sheer evil in the heart, man. Sheer hatred. Sheer something going on in their heart that, that causes them to be sick in their heart, sick in their mind, sick in their lives. There's a lot of really sick people out there. I've met so many of them. Um, sadly enough, and they've affected my life. And uh, it's pretty sad and scary because I have met some really sick people out there and, in my lifetime. And, you know, it's like, what do you what do? You, do? you know, it, this is all evil intent of the heart, that, that their minds are, are ill, their, their, their hearts are sick, and they are really literally sick. But not only that, but they're evil as far as I'm concerned because whatever you got going on in your heart is going to be reflected in your emotions going to be reflected in your will, your intent, what are you going to, if it's going to be reflected in your life, you know, and there are a lot of really sick people out there, and these people, you know, I mean, it's sad, like, what do you do with them, you know what I mean, well, they won't take responsibility for their own behavior, my dad was one of those individuals who would not take responsibility for his behavior, you know, I mean, he raped my mom in front of me when I was like six years old, and uh, just go, just turned six years old. And, my, I, and 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 people say, oh, really? Was it really raped, or did you? Were they just playing a game? And you know, because people do that, you know. And I was like, you got to be kidding me! Like, I don't know the difference. You know what I mean? Let's not be stupid. You know, like my dad had been raping my mother for years, and 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 hurting her. You know what I mean? And it's like. What's the matter with people's minds that they think that that's okay? And what's how can my dad today justify that? You know, like how can he sit there and say, "I love my wife and and I just love my family." It's like, oh, you sure showed it when you kicked the shit out of the brothers, with when you booted them in the face with your boot, you know, and you and you trashed them and you beat on them, and you and you and you verbally and emotionally psychologically them, you know. Oh, you sure showed it, you know. It's like no, that's not love. <laughs> it's not love at all. And you know he's he's confused on the issues of, of of what he did. In other words, he does not want to take responsibility for what he did, right? And so he doesn't want to own up to it. In his own mind, he knows he's going to face a judgment because he's Christian. So we're Christian. So I mean, he knows he's going to face a judgment, but he feels like he's been forgiven. It's all forgotten because what he did was. You know, he, he's already been forgiven because of Jesus on the cross. But the issue is, is that's only if you repent. And that's only if you, because you cannot escape what you did. It doesn't matter, Jesus came to, to, uh, to, to pay the price for that, you know, for everyone, right? But the issue is, is we, but when you repent, you have to say, I'm a sinner. And I, and I, you know, when, when you're repenting, you know, it's like, I'm a sinner and I sinned and oh my God. Forgive me, forgive me, Lord. You know what I mean? Sure, okay, maybe God's going to forgive. But if the issue is, is he still takes no responsibility for what he did. He figures he got an easy way out with Jesus. <laughs> and you know what? That's, I don't believe that. I think that he would have needed to admit to his family what he did and to and say, look, I can't make up for it. There's nothing I can do with the rest of you few little siblings here that I have left. A uh, few, 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 few children. Right, he's only got a couple of children left. Uh, his family's nearly destroyed, and but the ones that are left, I mean, he could come and he could say, 
you know, I screwed up. Me, I did it. And I don't know why I did it. You know, I had he, he evil in my heart. I had hatred in my heart. Because I, I, truly, I believe that he did love love his wife. I believe that my dad did love my mother. And I also believe that my mom loved my dad. Somewhere back when they were first married, uh, they thought they were going to be able to fix each other's problems. They were both codependent. And they were both abused as children, you know. But my dad was very twisted uh, in, in many ways. And so my mom right away found out that he was very twisted uh, psychologically because my dad is mentally ill. But not only that, but he's very sick sexually. So my mother was saying stuff like, my mother, when we, when we were growing up, by, by the time I was like, by 10, 11 years old, I knew my, my parents' whole sexual problems because my mother would tell everybody in the world. She would just talk and whoever was there was listening, right? And so, I mean, I knew the issues that were going on in their sex life because my mother would tell me. And, I, and, I, and my dad raped her in front of me when I was six years old. You know, so, I mean, and I knew he had been forcing himself on her because my brothers were trying to protect her all the time from him, right? Because he was an abuser and he wanted to have sex. and He didn't care who he had sex with, but he, he wanted to force her to have sex. And he didn't care that it was going to kill her. And, or that she would just had surgery or anything like that. He would just force himself. Well, he was a very sick man. That's why my brothers learned how to do what they did. And so, you know, it's a very, very sick and twisted, right? But the issue is is that, you know, he, he would never take responsibility for that. You know what I mean? And say, yeah, I mean, I I, I was messed up, you know, and I, and I hurt my family and I'm sorry. It's always, he blames everybody else. And so that's what these, this stuff is talking about these uh, on this course here. And and you can check it out on emmanuels.org, www.immanuels, emmanuels.org, or um, freechristiancounselingtraining.com. I, I think it's .com. I'd have, to, I'd have to find that for you. But anyway, talking about you know, is it you know, man not taking responsibility for their own for their own their own actions? And to me, it's an issue of the heart. You know, it's like so many times we want to blame somebody else. And we want to blame the world or we want to blame the devil, like, for instance, if you're a Christian. And my dad, you know, he blames the devil. He says, oh, it was the devil that made me do all that stuff. And it was the 1960s. It was the 1970s. I'm like, well, was it the 1930s, 40s? I mean, was it like, my parents were, were married in the 1940s. And my dad had started to abuse her before they were even married. <laughs> I don't know why she married him, but she she was my mother was abused, and, and so she just grew up abused, and she wanted to get away from her abusive, crazy gra- mother, which is my grandmother, who was very insane. Um, and you know, so she married this guy to get away from 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 her mother, and so she didn't she she really didn't pick very carefully. She was just like, I got to get out of this hellhole. It's the 1930s, late 1930s. She was just uh, turning 20 years old when she got married, and. She uh, this was she was this was uh, twenty would have been nineteen uh, okay nineteen forty three my mom was or not no, tw- no my mom was born in twenty seven so that would have been uh, forty seven so twenty years she was married at the age of twenty years old well he was abusing her they even got married because they were they were courting and dating you know before that and um, he was just an abusive man already you know I mean my dad didn't just just marry her and then become depressed and because he married the wrong woman or something and found out that he didn't love her really and started abusing her. My dad was abusing her before they were even married. I don't know why she didn't catch that. And and uh, so she married him anyway because they were both abused as children. They just thought that's the way you're supposed to live. Right? So, I mean, my dad was sick on every level. I mean, sick in every way, and he still is today. And, you know, sadly enough, that's the truth. But, but he takes no responsibility for it. My mother would take no responsibility at all. So this is what these articles are talking about. And they're saying, you know, we, we have to be responsible for our part in it, and for whatever part in it, you know what I mean? And because I'm a Christian, I really believe it's issues of our, it's, it's the issues of our hearts, you know? Like it says, you know, well, for I'm just biblically, you know, Proverbs 14, 12, uh, 2, and, and uh, or 14, 12, and 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5 says, our motives are usually self-centered. Our first thought is usually corrupt. And that's the truth of it. People, you know, if somebody does something to me, Let's say somebody's hurtful to me. It's not my first response to say, um, I forgive them. You know, they, they're just they're screwed up in their heart. I need to pray for them. Um, my first response is to say, you know, what and why and how could they do that to me? <laughs> and, you know, and like, you know, and because it's, 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 uh, it's something rising up within you that becomes really ugly and twisted if you allow it. You know what I mean? And so many times that that's, that's the issue. It's like my parents, they could not treat each other right. 
And my dad was a Christian, and my mother was a Christian too. I mean, they were both brought up in in uh, Christian, you know, Christian backgrounds. But the thing is, is they didn't know the Bible, and they didn't know the Word of God, and they didn't know that oh, you're supposed to treat people decently, and that you're not supposed to hurt your children or hurt your family. They just thought, hey, no, this is great. We this is like a this is like a free for all uh, fight session. We can just we can just destroy each other and destroy our family, and that's exactly what they did. You know, and, and that, to me, like that is such a sick thing to do. Like I see people doing stuff like that out here in the world, and I'm like, you people are are sick, and you seriously need to change. And, and especially people that have children, shame on you. You know, if you're behaving like that and you have children, shame on you because you will warp and twist them into these little beings that really have no hope in hell uh, unless they can find uh, some light and truth and goodness was what I found, which was Jesus, praise God. But, I mean, shame on anybody who does that to their children and thinks that it's okay and thinks they're going to get away with it. They're not. And I tell you, the the issue is, is that um, God doesn't appreciate it at all. Uh, he didn't put children here on the earth for people to kick around and abuse. And he says, I give you, he, he gave man dominion over this earth. And because man gave his power over the evil, which is, which is you know, in, in, in my my uh, spirituality, which is, which is Satan, um, man serves evil, right, instead of doing the right thing and serving God, which is love and truth and goodness. I mean, anybody who has love in their heart is not going to hurt their children. Anybody who has, and if they do, uh, because they, you know, they screw up, they're going to make it right. You know, I mean, everybody has the potential to hurt, you know. But the issue is, is so you make a mistake, well, then you go ahead and you, I'm, I messed up, I'm sorry. You know what, you know what I thought about last night? And I was sitting around thinking, because I mean, I'm talking, I'm thinking about this stuff all the time because I'm working on, on count, becoming a counselor, and not only that, I was abused as a child, so this stuff runs through my mind all the time. The issue is, I was sitting around last night, I was thinking about that baby Brianna, baby Brianna uh, case of that little baby down in New Mexico where those people were, the, the family members, the dad and the mother and the one of the grandparents, I don't remember, remember who was all involved, might have been an uncle or something, who they killed this little baby, that little baby Brianna. And I sit there and I think, you know, they like just the, the report that came in of what they did to her. You know what I mean? They 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 were they just completely trashed her. And I thought, how could you do that? How could you do that? Where where would your mind have to be? Where would your mind have to be to be able to throw a baby up in the air, let it drop on the ground, and and then because you figure, oh, we've killed it, I guess we could just abuse it, right? Uh, rape the baby, right? Burn the baby, uh, and keep throwing the baby up in the air and dropping it. What is going on in somebody's head that's doing that? Like, what is going on? They've gotten to the point where that baby, because they, they knew they had killed it, their their hearts were wicked. And they knew they had killed it, so they figured, oh, well, let's just rape it and do whatever we want. You know how sick and twisted and how completely against God that is? And you know there's people out there doing that right now to their babies, to their children? That is so wicked and so evil and so twisted. And if those people think that they're going to get away with that, they got another thing coming. You know, it's like my mother, what she did to me, you know, it was just as wicked. Like in God's eyes, it was just as wicked. You know, the horrific treatment that she did to me and, her, and, and my other siblings. And my dad, the same thing. And what they did to each other, just as evil and twisted and, and wicked. Because it came out of the same place. It came out of the heart. Like, how can people do these things and then and think they're going to get away with it? Well, some people do walk away on the earth here with no with no uh, pay, no no penalty and no paying the price, but they are not going to get away with it in the in eternity, and in the in the next life. There, I, I totally totally believe this, and um, you know I have every reason to believe it. You know what I mean? Um, and I, it's really it's an issue of what's going on in our hearts, you know. And so this next chapter is an issue of the will. It's our choice to do good or to do evil. We are the cho- we we are we are our choices, you know. The issue involves the heart, the inner substance of man, you know. And like God gave us a choice, and He says, "You choose. You're going to serve Me, or you're going to serve the devil. It's your choice." So in other words, like He He allowed us to make our own choices, and so in doing that. Who, who are you going to choose? How are we going to walk? How are we going to be? Am I going to have hatred and evil in my heart because my parents screwed me up or because life has dealt me some blows? It's, or am I going to, you know, have a heart full of love and full of, full of uh, uh, God after God's own heart? I choose that route. 
I choose God, I choose Jesus, and I choose love and light and truth. And now other people, you know, have chosen other things, and they still have love and light and truth in their heart, which shows me they have God in their heart. God is love. <laughs> God is love, man. And, he's, and that's why there's nothing about abuse that equals love. There's absolutely nothing related to it, correlated to it, or or even even that could even be a part of it that is love. It's all coming from hatred. It's all coming from evil. It's all coming from darkness. It's all coming from the devil. It's all coming from the evil intent of the heart. Who are you going to serve? You know. So that's where we all have to make our choices, right? So have a great day, everybody. You know, if you're having a hard time, you know, make sure you reach out and get some help and do not allow yourself to be destroyed by this, you know. Make sure that you reach out. You know, call a crisis line if you can't find somebody to talk to. Many times people are just not available or they just don't know what to say. And they can't help us. Many times people cannot. They don't know. They don't have the answers. And they don't even know how to try to get you the answers. Sometimes, you know, you need to reach out. And so, I mean, even group support's great. I really like that because there's, uh, like, online group support and group support because there's safety in numbers as far as I'm concerned. But um, (laughs) be very, you know, make sure that you be, be proactive, you know. Make sure that you reach out. If you're having a hard time and you're not able to cope and whatnot, right? Make sure you take care of yourself. And uh, have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll be back on tomorrow morning, same time, same place. Have a, a good day, everybody. Talk to you soon.